okay, this afternoon or this late morning, we're working Sky Blue Red OB Peacocks. It's a new strain, so it's got a lot of variation. It's got very complicated genetics. And I'm going to uh, do a white more discussion in the house where it's not so humid, where a white more than markers will actually work, going through the various genetics that produces this fish. Let's first look at breeders, and I'm going to show you what we produced in the last couple cycles. Okay, where are they? These are the two males I've picked for breeding. He's got a lot of red on him, but he's got a sky blue background. This guy's got more sky blue and less red. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to put them up. That's a nice fish. And, that, and this is sort kind of in between what these two fish are is what I'm aiming for. So let's put them up. And Kate, pick our two bleeders to the 300. And I'm going to show you some current run-of-the-mill fish. The sky blue, yes, some red. The sky blue is some red. Nothing to write home about. So we'll sell these two fish. I've got, sir, I've got quite a few others over here. Well, now then, let's look at what this strain will throw. Well, first of all, let's look at females. I'm putting this range of females that we have in this on the breeding colony, these are breeders. And I'm gonna discuss what's right and what's wrong about them. This female is a little bit pale. This one, she has an interesting dolphin head. It's probably a little bit too bright. This one's probably perfect for this strain. A lighter body, and when I go over the genetics on the whiteboard, I'll tell you why. She's got quite a bit of red in her body and she's got uh, sky blue highlights. This fish doesn't have quite enough red in it. This fish is a little bit too dark. It would tend to throw blue OBs rather than sky blue OBs. Okay, so I'm going to put these up and have Kate take them to. Or I'll have Skylar. No, oh, there's Kate just hiding behind Sable. While these females, some of these females aren't perfect, right now we're just in for any numbers or we'll get the strain to where I want it to be. It's going to be a difficult strain to get the breed completely true, but it will throw other fish that are good. Okay, Pete, this can go to the breeding colony. Okay, now we're going to look at other fish this strain grows. And again, we'll be looking at this on a whiteboard. These are blue old beans. They're not sky blues, they're blues. And calls for this strain, not bad in terms of blue OBs. That is a little bit too dark, but make decent blue OBs. That happened, and I'll go through the genetics why that happens rather than getting sky blue when I do the whiteboard. Okay. A couple more fish that came out of the previous breeding cycle. This guy's more of a red OB. Peacock, because he's not sky blue. This is a non, it's a young male, just starting to color up, but it's non OB, which means at least one of our males and one of our females carry a recessive uh, for not OB's a dominant gain. And again, I'll go through those genetics in the, when we do the whiteboard later, which will be at the end of this video. Okay, then let's take a look at some other fish that come out of it. Come out of this. They all settle down. Okay, this is a, these are all good, fairly decent. This is more of a blue OB. We'll put him with those. These guys would, can't, would fit into our party color OB strain fairly well. And I'll go over the genetics on those two and why, why they don't look like the fish I imagine in the strain, which were like the two males that we looked at. Okay. Well, we'll talk about genetics later, get these fish put up, get fish keeping. Okay, folks, this is kind of experimental. This is an old whiteboard we had. I couldn't clean it up very well. We're going to have to get a new one if this works, if this proves to be popular. I want a larger one, higher on the wall maybe mounted on the wall. 
Okay, we're going to talk about the sky blue red OB peacocks. It's very complicated set of genetics. We're going to cover six characteristics, blue, sky blue, and I'll explain why that's not really sky blue in a minute, red, yellow slash gold, OB, and pastel, and that relates to, pastel relates to the sky blue. So most cichlids, uh, can express blue. Blue is a very common color in, in cichlids, but it is subject to a lot of different genes. So it's what I call quantitative inheritance. You can be a blue fish and only have a blue face. You can be a blue fish and have solid blue body and clear fins. You can be a blue fish with blue fins. And all of those differences, the amount of blue and the tone of the blues determined by other genes, other than the gene for making a fish blue. We'll come back to sky blue in a minute. Red is also a, a color that normally is expressed in cichlids. Usually it's a fairly limited color in the fins, but again, it quantita has quantitative inheritance. It, there are a number of genes that affect the coverage and the brightness of the red where it, is, where it is put on the fish. On a, with a quantitative characteristic like that, you can just by constant selection increase the coverage. So you can develop a, a fish that has a, have red fins, but then you can keep selecting and get a fish that's uh, all the way red. Okay, yellow slash gold is complicated in peacock cichlids, probably because peacock cichlids are, are hybrids they have Imbuna genes, they have a lot of Alanocaras. Typically, yellow gold is a recessive characteristic, meaning that you have to inherit that, that allele of that gene from both parents. If you have one normal uh, allele, you're not gold. In this particular strain, that's not true. Yellow gold is a dominant characteristic. And so you can mate two yellow gold fish together and get non-gold, get a, a gray female or a, a blue male. And the other characteristic we're looking at is OB. OB originally stood for orange blotch and it was referred to a color pattern in Pseudotrophia zebra, which is an Ambuna. It's gotten carried over into, and in fact, that's where OB originated. OB in peacocks is a black blotching uh, pattern. It is a dominant allele. If you inherit one copy of it from a parent, you'll be OB. But the amount of spotting, the size of the spots, and the distribution of the spots is determined by other genes. So you can have an OB that only has one or two small spots on it, or you can have an OB that's almost black from the spotting. Then the other characteristic we're going to talk about is pastel. And this is a gene I've named. And what I found it does in, in peacocks is fade out all the other colors. And it's a recessive. You have to inherit two copies of pastel in order to, to be pastel. And the difference between a blue cichlid and a sky blue cichlid is a sky blue cichlid has two copies of pastel and the blue is faded out to a sky blue. And we're going to try to look at some Punnett squares for those of you who didn't take genetics in either in high school or in college. You'll just have to bear with me. We're going to take a, let's look at OB. And o OB during meiosis, which is, the, is how eggs and sperm are developed, the chromosomes come in pairs. And these pairs get separated. Each gamete, each egg or each sperm only has half the number of chromosomes. It has all the types of chromosomes, but instead of being like a normal cell and having two, it only has one. So if we're looking at OB, we're going to do, this is a Punnett square. And if we take two OB cichlids, let's say that one of them, we're, we're going to look at the the most complicated thing first. Let's say that one of them is OB and the other has one copy of OB and the other, the, let's say the male, has a, an allele for OB and then the normal non-OB. 
the OB is dominant, so he's, o, he's OB. You don't know whether he is carrying the recessive. Let's take a female that is also OB, but she is uh, also what this is called being heterozygous. The two chromosomes aren't the same. Now, when this male produces sperm, he's going to produce two types of sperm in relation to OB. He'll produce non-OB and OB. The female will also produce that when this sperm connects to that egg, you get a fish that is homozygous for OB. Both, both chromosomes have the OB allele. Here you'll get one like the parent, this one, and then you'll get down here this sperm connected, this egg, fertilizing this egg will produce some uh, uh, fish that is non-OB, doesn't have any OBs. Now, if you look at the ratio here, you're going to get, on average, three to one OBs to normals. And now I'm going to show you how you could test if you had an OB male and you wanted to know whether he was heterozygous or homozygous. You could do this. you could mate him to a non-OB female, and in which case she would only produce eggs carrying the non-OB allele. In this case, you would get this, this one quarter of them would be like this, another quarter like this, So, yeah. so in this case, you would get, instead of the three to one ratio, you'd get a one to one ratio. Half of the offspring would be OB and half would be non-OB. And so that you'd know your male's heterozygous. Now, if he, let's take a look, take a look at if he was homozygous for OB, you would then get Oops, one hundred percent OBs. You, all the all, all the offspring would be heterozygous for OB, meaning they would be carrying the recessive or non-OB. So that's how you can test a fish, a cichlid with OB pattern, to see if he's homozygous or the female. You can go either direction. You can mate an OB female to a a non-OB male to test that female. Okay, so in this particular strain. We want OB, and we would like to have homozygous OB. Now, because we don't do test crosses, we're not really set up to do that. We're raising lots of fish. What happens is over generations of selecting OBs, just by chance, you're going to get rid of the non-OB allele. So we want a fish that has two chromosomes each with the OB allele on it for that gene. Okay, now then, if we look at... In this particular strain, we want for the blue, red. Okay, let's let's go back to yellow gold. In this strain, and we'll use this as yellow. Y, capital Y, is that a capital Y? Is that how you make one? <laughs> this would be a a fish that's heterozygous for yellow gold. It's going to be a yellow gold background. If you remember the video, the females are fairly intensive gold. The males don't look that way because they've got other colors overlaying it, but they have a gold body color. Okay, now you'll remember that I saw one, we had one fish that was non-yellow. And that means at least one of our males and one of our females were heterozygous. And when they made it, if we draw out the Punnett square on this, we have the plus sign is typically used in genetics to indicate the standard, the normal or wild coloration. Okay, so in this case, you would get this and this. And that is what happened, at least one of our, our pairs one of our males and one of our females were 
heterozygous and produce that blue fish. And we had others in there. That's just one I showed you. But it, by continuing to select against never using any of the blue fish in the population, there's a, an equation, Hardy-Weinberg equation, I can show you, but it's probably more math than you need. It shows that by selecting against this homozygote, you end up removing that allele from the population eventually. It may take a few generations, but you can do it. So what we want in this particular uh, fish is we want them to be homozygous for OB. So we want the fish to look like this and homozygous for yellow. Then for blue and red, we simply select fish with more coverage. So, and we've done this for generations. So most of our fish are blue with, and red with the red overlaying the blue. Now then in this particular strain, we also want the fish to be sky blue instead of blue. We could, looking at this, and we're going to look at the heterozygote, we could say we have a blue fish and we'll use sky blue little for that characteristic. And I'm going to tell you why that's really not the gene in a minute. So we end up with this, with two blue fish that are carrying the uh, recessive, not for sky blue. That's the characteristic that comes out. That's actually the pastel gene. And it that makes the dark blue fade out to a sky blue. You'd get one quarter of what you want. The good thing about this is that if we pick sky blue breeders, that's all we get because they're homozygous for sky blue. It's recessive and so they can't pass on the non-pastel. So by picking only sky blue uh, breeders, we are keeping that pastel gene in 100% in the population. Okay, so we basically want fish like this, OB, OB, yellow, yellow, and we'll use pastels, a small p pastel, which makes the blue sky blue. Then we want to select for fish with a lot of red and with good blue coverage. And we already pretty much have that. No, red is iffy. We're still working on uh, making, if you remember the two breeders, that breeder males, one had a lot more red than the other. The problem is if you get too much red, you lose the sky blue. So you need a good mix of that. And it's always going to be a problem. But if we pick the fish in the middle that are show sky blue with red freckling on them, then that, that's good. They'll be OB. They'll have the uh, yellow body color. Again, in the males, you won't really see that because the other colors overlay it. But you will see, if you remember all those females, they were gold. I was selecting the paler ones because I think they throw better sky blues than the darker ones do. So this is a very complex cichlid color pattern. The only other one we have that's more complex is the party color OBs because again, you're selecting for a bunch of different colors. That one, party color OBs, we don't have the pastel gene, so the colors are more vibrant. Now, one other interesting thing is that in dragon bloods, OB is not dominant. I don't know if it's an entirely separate gene or whether there's something else going on, and I don't really have the space and the time to do the individual matings to be able to tell, but you can mate two non-O dragon bloods together and get OB offspring. So the OB acts as a recessive there. And again, I don't know whether it's a different gene or whether there's another gene impacting that. It would take a few matings to do that. And we just don't, we're equipped to raise a lot of fish, not to do one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, well, I hope that helped. Uh, I promise on future ones, we're going to get a better board and we're going to look at a little less complex genetics just to uh, explain it. I think the next one we'll do is probably going to be our uh, sky blue peacocks wh where we're only dealing with uh, a blue fish and the pastel gene. Good fish keeping.